What are you two looking so happy about? It's the end of the harvest, don't you know? We've got potatoes, carrots, onions, you name it. Come and have a munch on the fat end of my turnip. Yeah, I think I might head off, actually. Oh, no, you've got to stay around for the celebration. It's going to be totes of maize balls. Ooh, have you got candy floss? No, actually, I've been waxed. Welcome back to Kippy's Quest. This week, we're finally seeing the payoff from all the hard work and striving of the previous two cards. The Four of Wands is a card of prosperity and peace. We've sent the ships out and they've come back filled with bounty. What, the chocolate bar? If you like, it can be whatever you want it to be. Hot pants. Okay, if that's what you want. It's also a card of home and domestic bliss. It speaks of that desire we all have for security and the satisfaction that we've achieved our ambitions. And now we can rest and enjoy the rewards. This is a good card whichever way you paint it. And speaking of painting it, the Sforza and Marseille serve up another generic offering. The Solar Busker comes up with a very practical piece of headgear. As usual, the Thoth Tarot is heavy on the astrological and planetary symbolism. According to Long Marlow Duquette, each wand is balanced and perfectly complemented with the Dove of Venus and the Ram of Mars ruled Aries. Crowley describes it as the lord of all manifested active power. Now I've decided that we're also going to start including Atalia's writings on the tarot. Who? A brief history of Etaïla. Jean-Baptiste Alliette, known to the world as Etaïla, was an 18th century French occultist who is widely regarded to be the first person to come up with a method for divining tarot cards. In 1785, Etaïla published this method in a book that translates to Way to Recreate Yourself with a deck of cards called Tarots. Four years later, he came up with his own tarot deck, the first to be designed specifically for occult purposes. Our friend Monty will be reading quotes from the Grand Italia Tarot book. Oh goody! Quick disclaimer, I think some of this may have got lost in translation, but let's see what wisdom he's got for us on the Four of Wands. What a sweet picture offered for view! Oh yeah, breathtaking that is. Can we find a better image? Vegetation 2 is in close union with Generation 3. Well, that tells you all you need to know. May as well end the video now. The product of vegetation will be in due proportion to the consumption made. This prosperous cooperation can only have the happiest of implications. Well, I've got no idea what he's talking about, but at least there's a happy ending. We'll have a look at his divinations later on, but for now, let's talk about the Wade Smith version. Wade says, From the four great staves planted in the foreground, there is a great garland suspended. Two female figures uplift nosegays. Oh, for goodness sake, it's just an old word for a bunch of sweet-smelling flowers. Ah, of course oh, it is. Yeah. I knew that. I knew, I knew that. that. Bollocks, you I didn't did. know that. I, I knew did. that. Like a pair of bloody children. Anyway, he goes on to say at their side is a bridge over a moat leading to an old manorial house. So here we can see the delight in the card. The two ladies are holding their flowers above their heads in a triumphant pose, while people mill around in the background. It's a truly happy scene. Rachel Pollock says the people here are swept along by joy. The hermetic title for the Four of Wands is Lord of Perfected Work. Now the title in the Thoth Tarot is Completion, but we consider they're referring to the same thing. It's the idea of achieving what we set out to do, and now we're celebrating and reaping the rewards. It's also a card of freedom. Rachel Pollock makes a really good comparison to the Tower card back at number 16 in the Major Arcane. If you've seen that video, you'll know that one of the meanings for the Tower can be about a sudden explosion that comes from being trapped in a negative situation and a build-up of energy. In contrast, we can say that the Four of Wands is more about openness and not letting things get to that point. Pollock says, Optimism and love of freedom carry the people together out of their walled city before it becomes a tower-like prison. The Four of Wands corresponds to the Aries zodiac sign and to the planet Venus. So we've got Venus in Aries this time. Venus is the planet of love and passion, and in this case it brings that influence to the fiery cardinal sign of Aries. This kind of calms it down a little bit from what we saw before with Mars and the Sun. Alistair Crowley said it is also referred to Venus in Aries, which indicates that one cannot establish one's work without tact and gentleness. This brings us back to the idea of perfected work, and how we can go about achieving that. The ram can be rather forceful and demanding at times, so the influence of Venus can make it a bit more considerate when it comes to working together to achieve a common goal. While it's important that we strive toward the things we want, it's also wise to keep our ego in check, and always treat people with respect. What are those pyramid-shaped things in Egypt called? Most of the time, anyway. The Four of Wands resides in the world of Absolute. 
and sits at the fourth sephirot of Hesed, on the Pillar of Mercy. This sephirot translates to mercy. So we're at Hesed, the sephira of mercy, grace, kindness and love. We've now moved beyond the abstract idea of the supernal triangle and into the first instance of physical expression. According to Lon Malu Duquette, Hesed is the fourth sephira, but it is the first one below the abyss. Consequently, the fours of the Torah represent the first solid manifestation of their suits. So the abyss he's referring to here is the area that separates the highest three sephirot from the rest of the tree, and to cross the abyss is considered to be the highest attainment of the ritual magician. Hesed is directly below Hokmar, and the path between the two sephirot is guarded by the Hierophant. In the Kabbalah unveiled, Samuel McGregor Mathers says, Hence there is permission granted unto none to enter therein, save unto the high priest, who entereth from the side of Hesed, in order that none might enter into that supernal place. The far of one's herb is fennel seed. Fennel helps with digestion and eliminates gas. Ugh. But what does it all mean? When the four of wands appears, it generally means that we've made it, and now we're celebrating. Wade sees divinatory meanings. They are for once almost on the surface. Country life, haven of refuge, a species of domestic harvest home. Repose, concord, harmony, prosperity, peace, and the perfected work of these. So we can see that it's also a card about home and being in a happy environment with family and friends. Success is one thing, but we also want to be able to enjoy that success, surrounded by our loved ones and having a good time. Rachel Pollack says the card represents a domestic environment filled with fire optimism, eagerness and celebration. What's a tale you got to say about it, Monty? In the upright, it announces entertainment at a house party to which you are invited. Get your glad rags on, it looks like we're going out. It also predicts an immense increase in your fortune, and likewise an increase in the number of friends. To be fair, I think an increase in fortune is usually followed by an increase in friends. Can I just have the money without having to deal with anyone? Wade had a very simple way of looking at the upside down card. He said reversed, the meaning remains unaltered. It's prosperity, increase, felicity, beauty, embellishment. Yeah, but what about... No, unaltered. But it could mean... Didn't you hear the man? The meaning is unchanged. Although we can always look at these positive cards in the same way that we look at the reverse sun card, in that the positivity is obscured from us in some way. Sometimes we can't appreciate that things are actually going really well for us because we're locked into negative thought patterns. The reverse card could be a reminder to count our blessings and be grateful for what we've got. Unaltered. All right, there's no need to get psychotic about it. When this tarot is drawn in the reverse and the spread is read for a woman, it predicts many children for her. Brace yourselves, ladies. Sounds like there's a litter of kids on the way. The big takeaway for the Four of Wands is the concepts of prosperity, times of plenty and domestic bliss. The characters on the card also speak of freedom and breaking out of the negative mind traps we sometimes find ourselves in. Rachel Pollack says they are leaving a walled city for the open bower. In other words, their spirit and courage carry them from a defensive situation to an open one. Thank you for joining us once again as we model our way through the suit of wands. May the coming days bring you riches, peace and the freedom to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.